Welcome game developers! In this video of our first person tutorial series we are going to learn how to use the graphical user interface inside the Unreal Engine 4 and we cover how macros and functions are different. Stay tuned! So the pretty first thing I want to do with you is I want to reorganize our variables because if you see here it is getting a little bit messy. Just select one of your variables, I start with gun offset and here you can pick a category. You can either select one of the existing categories or you create an own one. So I'm going to call that um, spawn projectile and I put everything spawn projectile related inside here which is the hit location and also the body rotation and the initial body rotation. So and now the nice thing is you can minimize them here. So another category I want to make is settings. I put inside there the base turn rate and also the base lookup rate. This really actually is not in use. You can find it out by pressing the right mouse button, go to find references and you can see there is no reference. So we can also delete this one here. The next category will be save game. So we are adding the save game. We are going to add the slot name, the user index and post arrays. So you don't have these values and I don't need them anymore, so I'm going to delete them. They have only been part of another tutorial. So they are removed and here we got some stats for the player, so I call it stats. And actually I want to make some other stats because I want to add armor so I select maximum HP and I press Control W so I got exactly the same values now and I just call it armor and I do the same thing and call it maximum armor. So as you can see they are already part of stats now. Um, Small side note, as you can see here is pawn pipe character. This is how you can create subcategories. The category is pawn and the subcategory is character. I didn't use that right now, but it's still handy. So then I want to change some things with our damage function. First thing, we want to use a graphical user interface so we don't need this output on the left corner of the screen. So I'm going to remove these two nodes. And I want to use this in a macro. So just select all the nodes except the event and press the right mouse button, then you will get this pop up. And as you can see, you can collapse them to nodes, functions, or macro. So, what is the difference? A node is pretty much the same like a macro. With the big difference, you can't reuse a node, but you can reuse a macro inside the same blueprint. So the real big difference is between a macro and a function. Inside a function you can use something like a delay node and you can use it for blueprint communication. You can call a function from another blueprint. You can't call a macro from another blueprint. Um, actually, I'm not going to reuse this uh, stuff, but I'm still going with a macro because it's pretty much the same like the nodes. So I'm going to select collapse to macro and give it a nice name. I'm going to use it for the damage calculation, so I call it damage calc. And as you can see, this here is a little bit messy with the names and we got this value two times. When you double click it, you get inside the macro and you can see the values once here and once here. I'm going to break this connection, but we will remember where they were. So back to our event graph, select the macro again. We don't need one value two times as an input, so we are going to remove one of them. And also I want straight lines, so I'm going to move this execution pin up to the top. And this red pin now means it does not exist anymore, so just hold down the Alt key and use the left mouse button to remove this connection. So the next thing is you should really use nice names so you know what is what. 
and I'm going to call the damage damage. And object is fine with me, so it is everything I want to change. Just double click now here and we are inside our macro. Drag this out a little bit and just press right mouse button on the damage and promote it to a variable and call it current damage. And also set it up here as a stat. Then we need to rewire here our execution pins. And we don't have to forget the current damage was part of this calculation and also here. So as a small reminder what this does, this looks up if it is a healing value and if it is then it is increasing the HP of the player. I don't want to increase the armor of my character so this is everything I want to do with a healing volume and I'm done so I just drag the execution pin to our output. And as you can see it will automatically add that. If you want uh, to have a different setting, something like the armor has only a quality and the quality is removed and uh, actually the HP always is reduced, you need to set those things up here but I'm only going with that. So this here is done. The next thing would be we are taking damage but there are two different things. Actually we can have an armor or we don't have an armor so we need a branch for that. And we are going to check if our armor is greater than zero. So float greater than float and put this in here. So what will happen now, we check if we got armor and if we got armor, we will go the true pass. And if you don't got armor, we will go this pass. So just move this connection down here by holding the control key and use the left mouse button. And then we got two different scenarios again because now it could be that uh, your armor can take all the damage or you need to reduce damage and HP uh, of the armor. So we are going to track down here the line and add another branch. And here we are going to check if the current damage is smaller or equal to our armor. So, and if the current damage is smaller or equal to our armor, it means we can only reduce the armor and don't need to take care about the HP. So we only need to set here our armor and we are dragging out our armor, the current damage, and we subtract these two values and use them as an input for our armor. So, and we are done again. So a little bit more complicated is it when you need to share the damage between armor and HP. So therefore we take our current damage, the current armor, and we subtract these two values. And we use this as an input for our current damage. And after that we are going to set our armor to zero. So let me explain what this does. By this point, when we are here in our false tree, we already know the armor is not strong enough to take all the damage. So we know, no matter how big the value is, the armor will always be at zero after that. And now we got our current damage. We just take our armor and we want to see how much of the damage is still remaining after the armor is destroyed. And we are going to set this value here. So this new armor, uh, this new damage is the damage we need to reduce from our HP. So we just need to hook up this execution pin down here. So now we take the remaining current damage and subtract it from our HP. So after this, we are also done. You can also use a rewrite node with double clicking on the line if you like that. Looks a little bit nicer. And actually there's one more thing I want to do. I want to check how much HP we got. So I track out the HP and I say if our HP is smaller or equal to zero, I use this as an output pin, just drag it in here again. What does that mean when it is smaller or equal to zero? It means we are dead. So this is how we are, will call it is dead. If it is true, the player is dead. If it is not true, the player is still alive. So just go back to our event graph and now you see the value here. Just drag it out and use a branch. And now if it is true that the player is dead, we are going to destroy the actor. 
So this will remove our character. We are inside the first person character, so reference to self will remove the actor. And then we will add a small print string, something like your dad. So now our armor is completely set up and also we can die. We want to show these values in our user interface. So just select the user interface inside the content browser and go to widget blueprint and call it something like hot and open it up. On the top left, you've got some widgets you can play with, but I know what I want. So I just type here the vertical box drag it in somewhere on the screen, does not matter where. And I also want a progress bar. So just drop one inside the screen somewhere and one inside your vertical box. So I want to show you a big difference, which is very important. I selected now the progress bar, which is a direct child of the canvas panel. And as you can see, I can change here the position and also something like the size. But if I select the other um, progress bar, you will see I got a different settings. This is because these settings depend on the parent. So if you don't find a setting, it might be because of the parent, but I want both progress bar to be part of the vertical box anyway. So drop it in there, select one of these, go to fill, select the other one and also go to fill. And now they have the same size. So one of them shall represent our HP and one shall represent the armor. So I select the top one and I call it armor. And the bottom one will be HP. So for HP, I want a different color. If you increase here the percentage, you will get a preview of the progress bar. And I want the color to be red. And you can also set here a preview value. It is really just a preview. This value won't be represented inside the game. So go and select a vertical box. And as you can see, there is a anchor point on the left top on the screen, but I want it to be on the top right of the screen. So I go here to anchors and select this anchor. The reason I want it to be there is because on the left side you will have a debug output and I want to read them. So just set here the position to zero and zero and you will see it will now be outside of the screen. This is because the pivot is right now on the top left corner. We can change that by moving this alignment and I set it to one zero. So therefore this is now our new anchor point of the item. I want to move it a little bit into the screen so it's not on the edge. And this is what it will look like. Now you can just adjust the size depending on what you like. I select something like this. This looks okay for me. And I want to show you something. You see here now beside the percentage you can bind here. You can create a new binding. But we are going inside our graph. And we are going to cast here to our first person character. Put in here our player character and promote this to variable. Something like my character. So if we compile now here and go back here into the designer, you can see you can access all the values of your character. And depending on the settings, you already can maybe pick something like HP. But as you can see, the maximum value is one and we got 100. So we need to do a little bit of math and therefore just create a new binding. And you will end up here. First thing, give it a nice name. Then drag out your character. And we need here to get our armor, one time the armor and one time the maximum armor. And now we are going to divide it float by float, put in the armor, divide it by the maximum armor and put this into your return value. In that case, all the time you will end up with a maximum of one and it will be between one and zero. So if you got here 100 armor, it will be one. If you got here 200 armor, it will be one. So you will have always one. And this is exactly what we need for our progress bar. So then select after this DHP and go again to bind and create binding. 
We are going to do the same thing, give it a nice name, drag in your character, get both of your HP values, and divide them again. And that's our return value. So this is everything we needed to do here. Just compile it. Now we need to go back to our first person character, go here to the event graph and look for event begin play. When you double click it, you will be here and we can straight add our widget. So first of all, we need to create the widget and the class is the widget we named it earlier. In my case, it was hot. And then drag out the blue line here and just say add to a viewport. So now it is already a part inside the game. I only want to quick adjust here the values. I want to set the damage to 75 and the heal value should be 10. So it will be a little bit faster. And now when I play the game, you can see the two progress bars, which represent armor and HP. And when I walk onto this damage volume, it shall reduce the armor to 25%, and this is working. The second time I'm walking about, it shall reset the armor to zero and reduce the HP to 50%. Also, this is working. Now we are testing if the healing is working. It shall not increase the armor. So that's fine. And now when we go on this again, we want to have 25% of our HP. And also this is working. And when I step on it again, I want the player to be dead. So this is fine. Now when we quit, you will see this error, this warning. And the issue is, we are going to kill our character here inside this blueprint. It will be destroyed when we are dead. But inside our heart, we still try to get the value to show it in the progress bar. So we really need to check if our character is even valid. So just drag out here line and type is valid. And put in here the line. But be careful, you need this with the question mark. Because when you drag it out here, is valid, you will see you got question mark in the function symbol. So you need the question mark. So we did this now for the HP. We also need to do it for our armor. Connect again here our character. And now when we are playing that again, the player will die. So everything is fine and no error messages. And last thing I want to do, you see how easy it is to use a function or a macro and therefore I also want to reduce our spawn projectile. So select everything, go inside here, deselect the input action, press the right mouse button and go to collapse function or collapse the macro. But make sure you don't have here some delay nodes because if you got here a delay node you need to use a function and you should not use an macro, but we don't have that here. So we can use right mouse button, collapse to macro, and just give it a nice name, something like spawn projectile. And as you can see, it looks way cleaner without any change. So thank you for watching. Subscribe. Like the video. Visit